this question is asking me to use analytic methods, that is, no calculators, to find the extreme values, both absolute and um, relative or local, of this function on the given intervals. This is the interval that they're asking for. And I'm supposed to identify any critical points that are not stationary points. So I'm supposed to make that distinction here. So I like to start these problems by finding out well, what is the domain of the function. It's always a good place to start. And it's a sine function. So we know that the domain of the sine function, even though it is x plus pi over 4, the domain of the sine function is negative infinity to infinity. All real numbers work for x values on the sine function. I also happen to know that the sine function is an odd function. Now I'm just kind of putting that in my list of things that I know, which means that um, f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. I don't know if that's going to come in handy or not, but it might. And then the last thing I know is kind of like, what, the, what is it? Well, not the last thing I know. I hope I know a couple more things than that. But that the sine function looks kind of like this. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's a wave, and that, that might help me kind of visualize what's going on here. So as a, a, a wave type of function, it doesn't really have any end behavior. It just keeps oscillating back, well, not even oscillating. It keeps just going back and forth uh, uh, on, on a wave. So my next step is to find the derivative of this function. So f prime of x, well, the derivative of sine is cosine. So I have cosine x plus pi over 4. And if I was to use the chain rule, I'd have to do the inside of that function too. But the inside of that function, the derivative is just 1. So really, my derivative of this function is cosine uh, x plus pi over 4. And similar to the sine function, the derivative of the, 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 the domain of the derivative is also all real numbers. Cosine and sine both have the uh, same domain. So I'm not really worried about any points um, being invalid, any x points being invalid in either the function or the derivative. So if I'm looking for extrema, extrema happen, extreme values, absolute maximums or minimums, relative uh, maximums or minimums, happen where the derivative is equal to zero or where the derivative does not exist. Well, in our derivative right here, since the domain is negative infinity to infinity, um, I mean, the derivative does exist at points to that side of 0 and that side of 7 pi over 4, but I'm really only worried about that interval right now. So I'm really looking for points where the derivative is equal to 0. So I'm going to set cosine x plus pi over 4 equal to 0. Now to solve this, I kind of got to go back to my trigonometry. So I know that cosine theta equals 0 at two points. Cosine 0 equals two points in our interval right here. Cosine theta equals 0 at um, pi over 2 and at 3 pi <laughs> over 2. So what that's telling me, this is this is good trick practice, is that x plus pi over 4, that is the argument of our derivative, has to equal pi over 2 or x plus pi over 4 has to equal 3 pi over 2. That way I'll find the x value that makes the argument of this, co of this uh, cosine function, our derivative, um, pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2, and that is what gets me to uh, uh, the derivative being equal to 0. Now, I just said a lot of stuff right there. You might want to pause, rewind, and play that again so you understand what I just said. So to solve this, I'm going to subtract pi over 4 from both sides. And I find that one of the values of x that makes my derivative equal to 0 is pi over 2 minus pi over 4, which is pi over 4. 
And if we can kind of look at it, it makes sense. And this is my derivative up here. Cosine of pi over 4 plus pi over 4. Well, pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is pi over 2. Cosine pi over 2 equals 0. So this is one of the points where my derivative is equal to 0. That is a critical and a stationary point. And let's do the same thing for this one. Well, I'm going to say x plus pi over 4 is equal to 6 pi over 4 in order to get ourselves a common denominator. And I'll subtract pi over 4 from both sides, and I find that x is equal to 5 pi over 4. So these are both the x values of, um, of critical points uh, and stationary points. And now I want to find out, well, what are those actual points um, in the function? So the function, as you recall, is sine x plus pi over 4. So I'll write that here. I'm going to write it again. f of x equals sine x plus pi over 4. So one of my critical points, one of my stationary and critical points, is I have sine pi over 4 plus pi over 4. So that's equal to sine pi over 2. The sine pi over 2 is equal to um, 1. If I do the same thing over here, sine 5 pi over 4 plus pi over 4, that's equal to sine 6 pi over 4, which is equal to sine 3 pi over 2, which is equal to negative 1. So on my function, I have the critical points, I'll write them down here, critical and stationary, because it's where the um, derivative equals 0, points of um, my x value is pi over 4, and my y value is 1. Here's my, it's the pi over 4 and 1. And I have the other point. 5 pi over 4, negative 1. Now, in this function here, since our domain is restricted, I also have um, endpoints. So I need to find the y values of those endpoints. So here's my function. I have an endpoint at 0, so I have a sine. 0 plus pi over 4. That's equal to sine <coughs> pi over 4, which is equal to radical 2 over 2. And I have sine 7 pi over 4. plus pi over 4, which is equal to sine 8 pi over 4, or sine 2 pi, and that value is equal to 0. So the points that I need to consider for my extrema are pi over 4 comma 1, this stationary point right there. 5 pi over 4, comma, negative 1. That other stationary point right here. And then I need to look at my endpoints, which would be the point 0, comma, radical 2 over 2. And the point 7 pi over 4, 0. So again, all of my critical points are also stationary points. 
These are just endpoints. Well, just these are endpoints. These two are endpoints. These are critical and stationary. So it seems pretty clear. I have an absolute A A B S O an absolute maximum on that point right there because that one is the, is my highest value. And I have an absolute minimum on this point right here because the negative one is my lowest value. Now, I'm going to point out something interesting here. This end point here, both of these end points, well, this end point right here is either going to be a relative max or a relative min. And I'm going to pause a second and just show why that's the case. So forgetting about the sine and cosine graph right now, if I have any kind of a graph that has a closed endpoint, two closed endpoints, almost by definition, <clears throat> the endpoint is going to be a relative minimum or a relative maximum. Why is that? Let's take a look at our definition of local extreme values. So I think it's pretty clear local extreme values um, <clears throat> when we have an interior point of the domain. We know like this right here is a local extreme. This right here is a local extreme. It looks like that one might there be. Basically, it's the highest point in the neighborhood. But it also says a function f has a local maximum or minimum at an end point if the appropriate inequality, these inequalities here, holds for all x in some half-open domain interval. Well, what does that mean? This point right here, let's make it a different color, is definitely the lowest. Now, it's not the lowest going that way because there are no points going that way. But it's definitely the lowest point in, in, in a neighborhood going that way. I, like, I might define that neighborhood right there. And the point up here is clearly a maximum point. Well, there's no other points going that way. But a half open interval would be there. That's the highest point. So an end point, in almost all cases, is going to be also a relative, um, at least a relative maximum or minimum. And sometimes it'll be an absolute maximum or minimum. So um, are there cases where that's not true? There probably are, but I don't know what they are. So look at your endpoints and just figure it's going to be a relative maximum or a relative minimum. So which is it? Is it a relative maximum? Are these endpoints relative maximums or relative minimums? Now, you might take the approach and just say, well, this is a bigger number than that, so that's got to be a maximum and that's got to be a minimum, but that's not really the case. What you need to do is you need to look at the um, <clears throat> at what the graph of the sine of our sine function looks like right around that point of zero and seven pi over four. So let's make a little sketch of a sine graph here. I just made a little x y axis. Here's two pi. Here's negative 2 pi. I'm doing this to kind of remind you how to do this. Here's negative pi. Here's negative pi. So this would be pi over 2 and 3 pi over oh, Positive pi, sorry. Pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. And that's 1, and that's negative 1. So my sine function has 0 at 0, uh, 1 at pi over 2, 0 at pi, negative 1 at 3 pi over 2, and back to 0 at 2 pi. So my sine function kind of looks like this. I draw them like little bowls. And the same thing on the other side. Um, there's a point, there's a point, there's a point, there's a point. I'll draw my bowls. There we go. Now, looking at my original function, which is sine of x plus pi over 4, 
I know that I have shifted that function to the left by a factor of pi over 4, by, a, by an amount of pi over 4. So it's not a really big shift. But this entire function is really kind of like, um, I'm going to draw this hope for the best, but it's kind of like that would be the point, that would be the point. I'm moving every point over like pi over 4 to the left. There, maybe there, there, there. So my function is really looking kind of like that. It's actually not a bad job, Glenn. Good job. I shifted it over to the left by pi over 4. So if I have an endpoint at 0, because this is, this is a whole sine function, I have one endpoint right here. And I have another endpoint at 7 pi over 4, which is right there. Well, now I can see that really at um, this endpoint, this endpoint over here, 7 pi over 4, you can see pretty clearly the graph of our function has been heading up to that point. So right there, I actually have a local maximum. So this right here is a local or relative relative maximum point. This point right here, you know, I didn't draw it as well as I would have liked to. But if you notice, we know that at pi over 2 on the regular sine function, let's use a different color. A regular pi over 2, we have a maximum of 1. And if I shift that graph over a little ways, pi over 4, my maximum would be right there. And this graph should actually be heading downward from that spot. You can kind of see it right here that it's already heading downward right there. So at that spot right there, I actually have a relative minimum. So even though this value here is higher than that value there, relative to the neighborhood of that particular graph, those are those are uh, this one here is um, this one here is a min, and this one here is a max. So those are my four points with uh, the absolute and the relative of maximums and minimums, and that's a tough problem with a lot of trigonometry and the graphing and the domain information.